So today I'm going to value a 16th century illuminated manuscript. Uh, now I don't want the point of this video just to be a, a video about valuing something. I want you to pick an illustrative example about the importance of storytelling in bookselling. Uh, one of the ways uh, that booksellers make money is we find something, uh, we place it in historical context, we research it, and we write about that to interest people. And certain objects uh, lend themselves particularly to wonderful stories. Uh, so as a book dealer, and uh, this is also for aspiring book dealers and even collectors, uh, I look for objects and books uh, that really have the potential to tell something wonderful about themselves. Uh, and that is really the value added proposition of a good bookseller. And one of the ways, of course, we make money. Uh, this uh, particular uh, manuscript was probably extracted uh, from what we call a uh, carta ejecutoria in Spanish, or a patent of nobility. Uh, now, uh, in Spain uh, from the uh, 14th century, probably through the 18th century, uh, whether you were part of the elite, elite or you aspired to be part of the elite, uh, you really wanted to invest time and energy into tracing your lineage, lineage uh, and nobility because that often conferred uh, protection. Uh, that often could mean uh, a reduction or elimination of taxes. Uh, so it was really good time to be friends with a local historian that could help you out. Uh, now, the crown was particularly generous in dispensing uh, these cartas uh, and patents on people uh, to the point where there were so many noble men in Spain uh, that it often became a little bit of a satire, uh, you know, as to who a nobleman was and <laughs> from where he came. Uh, there was, of course, a, a great uh, legal text of the period, uh, the Siete Partidas, about Fanzo X, which was the uh, preeminent uh, uh, work on law of the period. And that sort of regulated more or less uh, who or why you could get a, one of these patents of nobility. And sometimes these claims were challenged in court. And if the court ruled in your favor and agreed with your claim, uh, which they often did, that would sort of transform these cartas privilegios, uh, these uh, documents of privilege, into a carta ejecutoria. So uh, finally, these uh, uh, documents or these manuscripts were often illuminated and sources of great pride uh, for Spanish families that could trace their lineage and show proof of them with an illuminated manuscript. Uh, in today's market, personally, I find these manuscripts to be some of the most underappreciated manuscripts in the entire trade. They're often very beautifully decorated, uh, the calligraphy is amazing, and many times you can find them uh, relatively inexpensive compared to other manuscripts and thousands of dollars, uh, unless they're the highest end of them. Uh, so that is where uh, this page likely came from. It probably was taken from, or at least intended, to be the first page of one of those illuminated manuscripts for a noble family. Now, uh, about the art of storytelling. <laughs> if this was just a single page that was extracted from a manuscript of the period, uh, it would perhaps have a relatively low value. And we're talking five, six hundred dollars as a nice example of a uh, 16th century portrait. Uh, and when I purchased this, uh, I actually paid something around that because I did not yet do all of the research necessary into it, which obviously takes a lot of time. Uh, one of the interesting things, though, when you uh, began to study this particular manuscript is who is depicted. Uh, and on the front page in the writing down here, it says it is the Almirante Fernando Sanchez de Tovar, uh, Spanish nobleman, and it has the Tovar arms uh, in the upper left corner uh, with the knight. And it shows him beautifully depicted uh, with the... Uh, Red Cross of the Knights Templar uh, with his admiral's sword in the back and uh, a boy, perhaps his son, perhaps an indication of uh, people to come after him. Now, who was Fernando Sanchez de Tovar? Well, he was a Castilian uh, admiral of the 14th century. 
Uh, now, in the 14th century, there were a lot of wars and raids going on between France and England. Uh, and uh, some of those attacks on English soil uh, for the French, or at least to help the French, uh, were with the assistance of uh, Spanish troops and Spanish fleets. And uh, the Admiral Tovar, he led uh, one of the great fleets and attacks on England. And in the year 1380, he sailed up the, uh, the channel and he uh, destroyed a lot of property on the way, whether it was Southampton and Poole. And finally, he uh, came round and made his way into Gravesend and set on fire everything on his way to London. Uh, and that was considered perhaps the single most uh, audacious maritime raid on England uh, until the Spanish Armada of uh, 1588, which of course uh, famously ended in defeat. Uh, but uh, he was a greatly admired admiral of the period uh, through other skirmishes with the Portuguese. He brought treasures back to Spain. So. If you were going to trace your lineage or wanted to prove your nobility to the king and to the court, uh, there is perhaps a few better people than the Admiral Sanchez de Tovar as to be one of your forebears. So uh, whoever made this manuscript uh, had this wonderful portrait of the Admiral uh, made. To me, that tells a wonderful story. This particular raid on England in 1380 uh, was a very important raid. It was right before uh, the famous Peasants' Revolt of 1381, which has a significant place in English history, uh, where they rose up the serfs against taxation. Uh, now, there are many underlying causes for that Peasants' Revolt. There was the uh, decimation of the workplace uh, and laborers because of the Black Plague. Uh, but chief among them were also the expenditures on the, uh, the ridiculous warfare constantly between France and England, and therefore the need to have additional taxes on the poorer people against which they were revolting. And you can imagine uh, when the Admiral was coming up in 1380 and burning parts of Gravesend from Essex and from London, they could see the smoke rise and that only fueled uh, their anger towards the senseless war and these senseless expenditures, which were probably going to result in higher taxes. Uh, so this particular raid, I feel, had some uh, great influence on in English history. Uh, and it is a, just a wonderful portrait. And I tried to find other known portraits of the Admiral, and they're very difficult to find. It's like finding pictures of Columbus. Uh, you know, there are paintings, people do not know if they are genuine paintings of the period, if that's exactly how he looked like, or if they're a little fictitious uh, uh, and they're made up after the date. But regardless, this is a particularly rare uh, portrait of the famous Spanish Admiral. Now, for me, that is part of the storytelling, as I said, because it transforms a uh, portrait or an extract from one of these Spanish nobility patents, which wouldn't be worth a lot of money, into something that when properly presented or framed or put on a wall, uh, really then becomes a wonderful and rare 16th century portrait of a famous Spanish admiral with a lot of history and historical context to it uh, that people can explain and really appreciate. And I think that really enhances uh, the value uh, of the piece and came out of, of course, some research. And right now, uh, I would put a value of it probably around $3,000, which allows for, of course, significant profit from what I paid. But again, that came out of um, the story and research. And I don't know for sure if somebody will pay you know, what I would like to get for it, but I'm in love with the piece. Uh, and whether that person is equally in love or more so will depend on whether they buy it from me or what uh, they uh, consider its uh, fair value for in the marketplace. Uh, but I hope that is an illustrative example of regardless, again, of the importance of finding things about which you can build a story and really pour research and your heart and soul as a bookseller into telling it and therefore, you know, raise the value. Uh, so I hope that is uh, some uh, uh, help in uh, 
a little bit of information about how booksellers go about uh, doing their work and making some money. And I hope you uh, tune in again uh, for some more tips and uh, interesting things about the antiquarian uh, rare book trade. And don't uh, forget, of course, to subscribe.